I think the bakery is essentially the soul of the community. No matter what style of bakery it is, people gather. It's been that way throughout history. So was it new? Sure, my breads were different than what was out there, but really, I'm doing the same thing people have done for 10,000 years. I really didn't go into bread expecting to have a career out of it. I was working on a farm, and there was a guy who would bake sourdough loaves every couple days. It was enough for all the people that worked on the farm to have bread. And the smell of it, because it was coming in through my window, drew me literally out of bed. I wanted to figure out how that happens, how to make that very compelling aroma and the, the product. When I moved to New York, I was pretty much certain that I wanted to stick with the large format of bread. But I wanted to really streamline what we were doing as flavor focused. I mean, usually what happens is if you make something truly delicious, the beauty follows. I wanted to break down how each step could happen and maximize flavor. In the perhaps more recent history of French bakeries, you'll find that people don't want to throw away the croissant. So one of the great things that can be done with it is to make an almond croissant. I found that you could get a lot more flavor if you took a fresh croissant, cut it in half, and then toast it. Get that you know toasted, buttery croissant flavor in there. We then uh, dip it in a brandy simple syrup. Make a very nice almond cream. We fill it with the almond cream, put it on top coat it with almonds and bake for another 15 minutes. They're fantastic, especially fresh out of the oven. But the concept is nothing new. It's just taking an almond croissant and making it as good as we possibly can. One of the things that we do in our bakery is something I refer to as small batch mixing. And we're very focused on the spiritual connection to the dough you have a tremendous amount more control over the fermentation that's going on. So if you end up with a huge amount of flavor that would otherwise be not available. My goals were to create something that would be on multiple different levels, pastry, bread, savory, sweet, food that people could understand almost on a genetic level, almost like they could feel their ancestors saying, get the miche. When making the miche, we're using a blend of three different rye flours and three different wheat flours. We bake very darkly. The crust also hits the smoking point, so the aroma of roasted grain penetrates into the crumb of the bread, enhancing the flavor. But the flavor is already huge, abundant from 68 hours of fermentation and the variety of different grains that are in there. I would say that our miche is, is quite approachable. It's definitely a bread lover's kind of food. It's a bit like tasting wine or, you know, great liquor or beer. It is a complicated bread, but it's so beautiful on every different level. Right now it's spring, so we're able to highlight some of the flavors of spring. So I thought, I really want to bring out the flavor of peas. Kind of nothing speaks more about spring to me than fresh pea. So I thought two different applications would be really nice, both fresh peas and also pea shoots. The peas are firmer texture and the shoots have a more gentle flavor. The sauce has been made for hundreds of years, but this one is made with a little bit of dehydrated shiitake stem powder. You want to have, when you're building a tart, a variety of different textures from unctuous, creamy, to different layers of crunchy. We've got the flaky pastry, so it falls apart in the mouth. And then, of course, the miche crumbs, and the miche crumbs are going to add a rather intense crunch. There's a side to baking that anybody who gets involved with it will eventually come to understand, and often sooner than later, which is that you begin to gain a sense of the life that's going on inside that dough. 
It won't happen, I think, on the first time that you try baking at home or something, but as time goes on and you're consistently involving bread making in your life, you begin to develop a relationship with your sourdough starter and with the flours that you're using. I think that there's a lot of information available now for people to become really talented bakers. When you don't cut corners and when you take the time to actually make the product as it should be and as it has been, you end up with a spiritual connection to the dough.